so so far we can find out that yes we can do this kind of interesting experiment with samples but can we do some practical experiments with that and the answer is yes you can do some practical experiment with these systems and for that we need to have a mosbar spectroscopy system that i can take anywhere and that was possible when a miniaturized miniaturized portable mosbar spectroscopic system was developed which you can take it anywhere for your study all around the system and the short form is mi mos mimos so this is actually developed a few quite years back and this is actually a system that you can take everywhere with you and do an experiment on the spot and what was the different experiment you can do so so far we have discussing mostly about chemistry can we do archaeology and the answer is yes so what is the example of it so let me show you some example of it so this is an archaeological example what people have done so most of you have learned that people living thousand years back they know how to create colors and from there they draw very beautiful pictures in the caves so this cave pictures and one such cave pictures was found in a place called belo horizonte in brazil and over there these are the pictures people has found and they found very nice red color and not only that if you look very carefully you can find there are two different red colors one over here and one over here a little bit light and one little bit dark color and people have argued that those people living in the caves they know how to create two different red colors by changing the combination of the precursors and what precursors they used to create this red color people have argued that they are actually using iron oxide different form of iron oxide fe2o3 fe3o4 which are the ores already found on the rocky parts on the earth surface and they know how to use it and they are using different samples of it to create those colors and people are arguing like no 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 that might be possible that some of the color is actually washed off so then to resolve that people actually used mosbar spectroscopy and over there this instrument you are seeing this is the mimos so there you actually have this particular setup which actually put very close to that picture and over there you have the source the cobalt source we have and it bombard the gamma ray and the gamma ray is only affecting the iron so it is actually a non destructive phenomena so it is not cleaning or removing any of this drawing so it is affecting only a tiny bit of the iron present over there and what they found the data over there you can see they did the mosbar spectroscopy in the dark color they did the mosbar spectroscopy in the weak uh, light color and they found they are actually came from the different precursors so the people living way back in the cave they are not as stupid as we try to think they are smart enough to create two different precursors and mix two different colors and create two different color systems to draw different systems with red color so that is one of the unique thing people have found and another one example of this nice mosbar spectroscopy can be found also for astrology i should say astro mineralogy so all of you know that a few years back we have sent this kind of mars rovers or rover systems to move around the mars so this is a picture it is a picture Uh, not taken on the mars because there is no one to take the selfie of these rovers over there so over there this mars rovers actually sent and they actually equipped with this particular 
handheld smart instrument where they have spectroscopic imager a x-ray spectroscopic imager abrasion tool and also a MOSFET spectroscopy so there is a miniature version of that MOSFET spectroscopy is fitted over there and over there there is a remote sensing instrument present over here which is actually have a camera and other instruments present over there which actually detects where it can find some interesting sample and it triggers a signal to this MOSFET spectra instrument like okay record the spectra and they did record the spectra on the surface of the mars and let's see how the results look like and that is how the results looks like when they recorded it so this is from the camera how the signal looks like so the camera from here it is looking down and that is how it looks like and over there they look into one of the particular crater martian surface Gusev crater recorded in 2004 and they measured three different iron samples present over here so that is the original data and the colored ones are the fitted ones and they figure it out what are the different iron samples you have just imagine you are sitting on the earth and thousands of miles away on the mars you can detect what are the different iron oxidation state present in the Mars rock. And over here, it took 3, point, 3 hour 25 minutes for this whole measurement. In actual reality, the actual measurement is actually quite fast. In reality, when you do the uh, MOSBAR spectroscopy in general, it takes less than half an hour. So why it took 3 hour and 25 minutes? That is because MOSBAR spectroscopy should have also have this cobalt system right the cobalt 57 system uh, and where it sorry the, the cobalt precursor system which actually we already discussed about have a lifetime of 270 days and sending the mars rover packing it on the earth sending it through the rocket putting it on the mars takes time and over here, a lot of cobalt precursor is actually already lost. So that is why the cobalt precursor concentration goes low. So that is why we have to do the experiment multiple times to get a very good data that we can actually rely upon. So that is why it takes more time. But still, what it says that MOSFET spectroscopy can be very useful, not only to find what is happening around your complex, but also some complex thousand years back from this kind of caves and also thousand miles away in other planets to figure it out what are the different iron centers are present over there with that we would like to conclude this particular discussion over iron mosber spectroscopy there are other spectroscopy possible for tin and platinum i will add them some of the graphs that you can follow later on and find it out how different systems with platinum and tin we can also do some MOSFET spectroscopy now any questions or queries up to this point please go ahead hello sir Yes, uh, sir. In that case, that seventh example, uh, 3FE for 4S ferrodoxin, um, the actual uh, iron state is 2.5. So, how this is actually accounted means uh, uh, the oxidant state is 3 and it's not 3 and is not also 2. That is accounted by Mossberg. But uh, yes. is there any anti ferrocoupling or something means uh, how yes. the 2.5 is uh, accounted? Yes. So, over here, the this particular state yes the 2.5 so mosber spectroscopy already provided enough information that it is somewhere in between because of this particular values which is lying in between 2 and 3 and people have also done magnetic studies and over there you can calculate the magnetic coupling values from the magnetic studies and over there you can also find out what is the oxidation state whether it is 2 or 3 or 2.5 depending on the coupling 
you can find it out. Very similar to the coupling of JJ coupling you monitor in the NMR. Similarly, magnetic coupling can be also measured out. Okay, and from that values you can find out whether it is 2.5 or 2 or 3. Sir, we can use photoelectron spectroscopy here. Yeah, you can do photoelectron spectroscopy here. Okay. Yes, thank you. you can do that. But the thing is that photoelectron spectroscopy mostly work on the surface samples because it doesn't penetrate through a lot. Whereas Mossberg, okay. because it's gamma ray, you can get that idea of what is happening also, not only the surface, but also what is happening inside the sample. So you get a very better average picture of what is happening about the system. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. So, thank you. so one question from Rishabh, how to measure the delta value looking at the spectrum and how to find out which signal belongs to the isomer shift? For an example, let me take the example of this data. Uh, let me go over here and let me take this particular data over here. So what actually first we do, we take the original data. So we take this particular data over here. Okay, so that is how the data looks like. And you can see there are multiple curves over there. So first we actually deconvolute that. We fit the data with different data to figure it out which one is going to work together and give me this data. And what they are actually finding, look into that carefully, the blue data. One over here and one over here. So this is the blue data. Then there is a red data. One over here, one over here. And then there is a green data. One over here, one over here. Now, once you have these three particular data, if I draw it separately, that will be easier for you to understand. This is the blue data. So from there, what you do? Average it out. That will be the delta value. This will be the delta EQ value. For the red data, red data is a little bit close by. So take the average, whatever it is, that will be the delta value. This will be the delta EQ value. For the green data, green data is somewhere like this. So this will be the delta value and this will be the delta EQ value. Okay. So first we take the overall data, deconvolute it in different data, uh, different data points. And from there, you can find the delta value, delta EQ value. From there, you can uh, get an idea what is the their oxidation state, their spin state, and also from the Actually, this is actually put in the absorbance rather than the transmittance, just on the opposite side. But from their absolute intensity, you can also find an idea what is their ratio, how much is actually present over there in a sample. Does it answer your question, Richard? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank you.